we will keep the train moving here is Eric Klar. Eric Klar is local to Michigan and is the CEO of Quality Roots. And I won't say too much about Eric before he joins us here. So let's go ahead and move him over. Um, but Eric's a really cool guy. He's got an interesting story. He's actually a good friend of our CEO, Jason Rasnick, and is a, a player in the local Michigan market um, and, and looking like he's poised to grow. So this is, this is cool. But while he's moving over, Alan, when it comes to a lot of what Barrington was saying, this is a, it's a crazy time. And I feel like we've been saying that for a year now, right? Uh, or at least a year. But maybe now it's, we're on the uptick, man. I mean, bull market as you, as you position it, but um, maybe well, this is an interesting time. He's saying he's having lots of conversations with private companies. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting because, uh, you know, there are, there are a handful of really good companies and I, I just, some of them I know don't want to go public. And the reality is, you know, companies want to go public near the top, not at the bottom <laughs> typically. Yeah. So. But yeah. I mean, prices have rallied a lot from the bottom, but, you know, still, if you look, uh, I, I guess the way I would look at it, if I were one of these issuers, I would look at the charts of Cresco, Cureleaf, TrueLeaf, and GTI, and not at everybody else, if, if they're that type of company, which some of these are. Uh, and I would say, oh, they're actually back above their IPO prices or you know, when their pre-public prices or near them, or they're higher than they were a year ago in some cases. So it's, it is, it's very interesting right now uh, to look at that not all cannabis companies are the same. And if you're trying to benchmark, if you're, if you're like, uh, I, I know David's favorite company is holistic. If you're holistic mm -hmm. and you're Josh, you don't get depressed by looking at how, how poorly Medmen is doing, for example. Oh yeah. Or that I just mentioned, and, and you might feel more comfortable about the timing. I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. Well, Eric, we have Eric Clark. You yeah. might want to unmute yourself, my friend, or or have you? I'm you unmute. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, we have you. Patrick, how are you? Alan, how are you? Nice to meet you. Doing nice all right. Very yes. good, man. Family's well? Family's good, man. Family's good. We took a trip down to Kentucky to see my folks. Yes. So we're, um, hence the flowery wallpaper in the back. Thanks, yes. Grandma. Um, but um, tell us about yourself, man. Tell the audience who you are, what you got yes. going on. I know there's... There's a couple of different things that we could talk about here. So I'll let so, you get us started. No, I really appreciate that. Um, so I'm Eric Clark. Um, I'm currently the CEO of Quality Roots, a Michigan-based operator. Um, my background is pretty unique. Um, I come from a family who has uh, always been poised in the position of regulation and compliance. Uh, my father was one of Michigan's largest independent uh, pharmacy store operators mm -hmm. um, with plenty across the state. Um, in 2014, I learned a uh, a big lesson, uh, which was our exit to Walgreens, um, just a great, great transition to grow through and something that will hopefully allow our team to capitalize on this next space and this new venture. Um, in 2011, I actually did something pretty random um, during times of trouble and uh, e-commerce booming. I actually opened an independent toy store in the middle of Michigan randomly um, and built that business to now what is uh, known as Michigan's largest toy company, Toyology Toys, which uh, has a um, a variety of retail stores and um, a distribution business that is, we always joke, that is vertically integrated in the toy space, um, distributing products to roughly four to 5,000 stores across the country, um, everywhere from supporting mom and pop stores um, to the large guys like Target and Walmart. Um, you know, our biggest play is trend management, following consumer demand, um, and building teams to do that. So as I've uh, been you know, looking at this, the cannabis space for almost 10 years now, for us, it was all about alignment and timing. Um, and to us, our perfect alignment is that medical to recreational shift. And, uh, and that is where Quality Roots is poised to succeed. But Very why did cool. you start to look at cannabis a decade ago? Yep, so I, I started to get involved um, as the, I'll call it the financial arm of, uh, of some caregiver uh, businesses here in the state of Michigan. Um, you know, I was always that intuitive friend who didn't want to be hands-on with the plant, but wanted to make sure that my friends um, operations were successful. So, you know, that, that allowed me to really, um, look at the space further, digest it, you know, understand how the West coast was making that medical to recreational transition. You know, even as your early States like Oregon, uh, California, as they've made those crazy different transitions over the past, you know, eight to 10 years now at this point. Um, so that, that was really a, a great learning experience being hands-on making those investments 
and making sure that we were poised to succeed through all these market compressions. Very cool. And so uh, go a step further now and talk about quality roots. You guys yes. are in Battle Creek, Michigan, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, we're all about that medical to recreational shift and, and all about the application process, uh, you know, in these cities where we call home. Um, so right now we have our operating retail store, which is medical um, and recreational here in Battle Creek. Um, you know, we've been recreational here for just about a month and um, it's been awesome. You know, the, the feedback from the consumer, um, the way that the team has evolved and grown and started to be a family is, you know, is, is really the reason that I'm in this space. Um, so for us, it's all about building a business from a store and not building a store that turns into a business. So what we're doing out here in Battle Creek is actually basing our business here. Um, we are building all of our team angles with everybody who's actually currently in store. And the reason that we're doing that is because we believe, again, at fueling people to the potential that they deserve. And here in this space, we're not, especially in the state of Michigan, you know, we're running into a lot of scenarios where um, there's people who have been in the space and they're, they're looking for those opportunities. And then you have the people who are working in other spaces, but there's so many, you know, direct comparisons like banking, you know, restaurants, and they haven't been able to really, you know, get into the, into the space. So, you know, we pride, we, we really pride ourselves on um, being very diverse in, in how we've been bringing people in either with cannabis knowledge or none. Um, you know, we're fueled on our, on our managerial I say, expertise and, and family feel. You know, I mentioned my parents' pharmacies. When my dad sold his pharmacies, the average tenure employee was 19 years. Um, and, you know, and that's something that, you know, I've, I've started to do in my toy business. You know, our average manager is almost at six years now, and we've only been in business 2011. You know, and that's something that I need, you know, keyword need to carry over into this space. You know, little things like Michigan changing their profit sharing, pro profit sharing programs recently will allow for my team to be furtherly embedded with our business. And as we go to turn on our four to five additional licenses that we already have secure, um, and then the additional ones hopefully coming through that competitive RFP process, um, we're going to be poised to operate and not start operating and then have flaws in operations. Uh, we're all about success as fast as possible. Um, and I even think that aligns to the reason that we haven't really taken a large sum of outside money yet is because, you know, myself, my family and our, you know, our quality roots family, we want to make sure that when we're bringing in, in outside money, that's, you know, substantial. I want, I, I'm the guy who doesn't want to work off of projections and you know, hopeful philosophies. I want to work as close to a guarantee as I can. And that's important to myself. And that's, I know also going to be the fuel, which gives us the best investors who will not only be investors, but want to fuel the company for success as much as all of us do. Very yeah. cool. Uh, a lot of uh, multi-state operators have been poking around and some of them transacting in Michigan already. Have you been approached by any of these? Is that yeah, something so, that could be beneficial yeah, or no? Yeah. no that, that, that's a great question, Alan. Um, you know, as a one-store operator, you wouldn't think that, you know, that would come too often. Um, that's something that we've gotten almost three times since we've actually been recreational here in, uh, in Battle Creek already. Um, but for the sake of what I've promised my team and the people who have already, you know, given their all to be with us on this, on this ship as we you know, build it bigger and bigger on a daily and weekly basis. You know, I'm committed to building the program, yeah. you know, a 60 to 72 months, clear strategy that I want to follow. You know, I, uh, the team has invested time and, you know, their, their past careers to now embed in this. And yeah. I want to make sure that I'm mac maximizing the opportunity for my team as much as I am for our family. I would say your only risk is if federal legalization were to happen quickly, which I don't think it would anyway. So you're, you're going to be free to build your business uh, yeah. without worrying, I think. Right. So, you know, that worry is unique. And uh, honestly, that's, that's something that excites me in a weird way. And I know you're not going to hear that from a lot of people in my position, but the reason that excite, it, it excites me is, you know, my past and, and, you know, also current career of the toy and trend business. You know, that's when, Alan, that, that's when shelf space becomes really important. Right. And, uh, you know, I've built my professional career so far on understanding shelf space mechanisms for success, you know, um, and that's something that if once this goes federally illegal and, you know, the big boys can bring it in, you know, of course, we're not a vertical operator here in Michigan, but those vertical opportunities are going to be there for the people who can position that product properly. Mm -hmm. And that is something that excites me. Um, you know, the other thing I'll say too is, you know, this is another unique part of our cannabis business is we're we're a retailer who happens to sell cannabis, right? So people are coming to our stores and, 
you know, I, I talked to another operator the other day, you know, our average sale ticket is around 180 to $210, which wow. is, which is pretty high in this space. Yeah. And the reason for that is because we're not only selling cannabis products, we're selling, you know, Pat, I know Patrick's aware of some of my trend items I've put out in the past, hand manipulatives, cool speakers, office-based toys, things that go along with wellness. And, you know, we're tying a lot of that in together, you know, and that, that angle, especially here in Battle Creek is, is giving people the feeling that, you know, like, who are these guys? You know, why are they letting me take time and, you know, scope out the floor without, you know, being on top of me? It's because, you know, again, we're retailers who happen to sell cannabis, you know, we're all about the experience, which needs to lead to education, which if you're hitting on those two E's, it's going to turn into shopping. So, you know, we just need to continue on that trajectory and make sure that everybody feels that welcome, you know, that welcome, uh, welcoming environment all the time and is leaving here with things beyond just cannabis. Very cool. So Eric, um, I, I may have missed this, but what was the date of the, the store in Battle Creek coming online? Yeah, so the original date we were supposed to open was March 12th, 2000, or 2020. Two uh, days before we closed? Yeah, you know, so we're at a restaurant. You know, I think we're you know, it's just on our phone eating sushi, me and uh, uh, my right-hand girl, Nicole. And before you know it, the NBA is canceling the season. We look at each other. We're like, we're the only two people in the sushi restaurant right now. <laughs> oh, we need to go home. Um, you know, but one thing that, you know, and I hope this is just a sign of character for myself, and I know my team feels it. You know, did we have to furlough the people who we brought in two, three weeks before this? Yeah, I mean, and, and it was tough. But did we engage with them every week, if not twice a week, to make sure that they were still engaged, they were focusing on education, we were giving them whatever training was needed and being as pr proactive and reactive to the situation as possible? 100%. Um, my management team, you know, we didn't stop, right? You know, we didn't, we didn't leave each other's sides, you know, even though it wasn't person to person, right? Just like this, where, you know, we, we, we keep fighting the fight. You know, as you know, every municipality is working differently through this process. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got awarded uh, actually our medical and adult use permit in Adrian during all of this. You know, they set, they accept an, an application during all of this. I think it was like wow. April 9th or April 10th that we handed that in, you know? So, you know, the industry didn't stop and neither did we, you know, and even to our other ventures, which is a sign of my team's character, you know, we reacted to, to change things in a big way. You know, for our toy business, we partnered with a local company called Med Express, which guaranteed a delivery to any door in Michigan within 24 hours. This was a company who I used to work with in our pharmacy days to guarantee prescriptions to nursing homes across the country, across the state. They were still around. We approached them with this idea. Before you know it, I got slip and slides at any door within 24 hours. So, you know, and hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, that's <laughs> definitely hand sanitizers. Cool mask, too, for kids. You know, whatever, whatever it took. But again, you know, the, the variable changes, right? Cannabis, toys, prescriptions, the variable changes, but the family mentality, the operational perspective, the hands on managerial team, that's never changing. Very cool. Uh, we have a question from the chat. What do people like to buy most at your dispensary? Wow. Um, so medical, you know, and this was uh, the unique shift to, to us learning. But medical, I think uh, edibles equated for almost 62 or 63% of our sales. Smoke weed. We started you know, to get air car, this little, oh, you know, like, we got to get this processing center up and running. We got to do everything unique as possible, you know, the trend guy. Um, but then the day we went rack, that's, that went to 85% packed bud. Um, so right now we're at 85% wow. packed bud. If there's anything that's really um, exciting me about, uh, about the product offerings and what's coming to the market and like the one unique thing that's turning as fast as it's coming in, I think it's sublingo, sublingo products. Um, you know, I, we always joke, convenient consumption, you know, that would probably be a brand of ours, actually, convenient consumption, um, you know, and there's just so many unique things that will allow you to conveniently consume. And I think that's where the, where the industry is headed. And Alan, to your point on that, you know, the world opening up, I think that's that first position of shelf space, mm -hmm. convenient consumption. So 7-Eleven, how you doing? Mm -hmm. There it is. Cool. Yeah, it was well, thanks right. for that, man. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, and thanks for Toyology. I like to joke with him that uh, uh, I spend a lot of money in that store. I live right behind one of them, so. And I'm looking at buying you one day. That would be, uh, you know, I, I haven't lost that contact. So, Alan, I got to keep that. <laughs> there that, it is. That rolling, you know, um, you know, and like I said, right now for us, it's all about, you know, learning the cycle, embedding into the industry. Um, and I, I hope everybody can hear it in my voice, the excitement and eagerness to, to win and prevail. 
um, and, and that team and family identity. Like, I, I can't explain how important that is to me. You know, watching, watching and, and fueling people to hit their, you know, maximum potential and, and even places that they didn't know they were able to meet, you know, th that's my fuel. It's, it's not the dollar. And I think that's something that's going to pay off for us in the long run. Very cool, man. Awesome. Well, thank you, Eric Clark from Quality Roots. We really appreciate you being on, man. And maybe we'll see you August 18th at our Michigan-focused event, man. It's, it's possible. Alan, great meeting you. Patrick. Yeah, you too. Good luck. Family. Good to Talk see to you. you. Hey,